All right, this morning we're talking Estonian folklore, how to kill a crat, artificial intelligence, and a couple of films you should see this weekend. How's your ride going, man? Hey, good morning, lovely people of the planet. This is Jeff O. This is the Morning Ride Pedal Powered Podcast. Look, folks, I don't know anything. I'm just talking about things that inspire me as I'm trying to evolve as a filmmaker, as a writer type poet, and as a human being. That's the hard one. <laughs> How's your ride going this morning? You weak good? Look at this weird, weird, gloomy day. What is with this summer? It has been such a strange summer. And I don't know how strange it is. Just very different than anything we've had before. Speaking of anything that different from than what we've had before, check out this new artwork. How do you like that? We're gonna have to stop and get a photo. Whoa, I dismounted from the other side of the bike. I never dismount from that side, how weird. Yeah, we've got this new little park over here in Garden City. Oh, and can we get a good photo of the artwork? It's gonna be rough. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I know, I love those low angles, don't I? So you got big plans this weekend? I finally installed my first gutter. <laughs> it's not that it's complex, it's just frustrating because I'm not a gutter installer. I don't know how to do that stuff. Hopefully, it will go a lot more quickly this weekend. Got the right tools now. Got a new drill. I smelled smoke coming off the old one. That's too bad, man. I hope that that guy's still okay, because I love that drill. But it requires a cord, and getting up and down on ladders with cords is, well, it's not the best thing in the world. That's all I'm gonna say. So let's get into this thing. So in Estonian folklore, I couldn't find dates on this. I'm sorry about that because I'm fascinated to know like how long has this idea been around. But there's a mythical being called a Krat, K-R-A-T-T. -T. And these beings are made by people and what it is People take household items, old tools, lamps, they mix it with bits of uh, organic material, like maybe hay. Oh, we got the folks taking care of the trails this morning. Hey, good morning. They mix it with hay or uh, rope. And to animate these, hey, good morning. To animate these creatures then, they have to go out into the woods to meet the devil. <laughs> of course the devil's involved. And they have to give the devil three drops of blood and the devil will then animate the crat. And then the crat becomes like, kind of like a dumb slave, a laborer. Now, some crats can fly evidently. And we're gonna talk about that. Ooh, look at this, this is looking so good over here, man. But the trick is that you have to keep your crat busy because if the crat becomes not busy, the crat starts misbehaving. Now they're kind of thieves already. Hey, good morning. And so you kind of got to keep them in control. But the owner then isn't responsible if the crat goes out and steals something which is fascinating because this is where we come up with the idea of algorithmic, what is it? Uh, the algorithmic liability law, which says that, you know, to what extent is an algorithm, is a machine liable outside of the people that operate the machine? So let's say that you're in a life and death situation and you go out to Google and you can't remember what 
the number is to call for your emergency provider. I know it's 911, but but basically, let's say you can't remember that, and you go to Google and you say emergency numbers for my area, and it doesn't produce a number that's useful to you. Is that algorithm liable? if you don't get the information that you need, whereas in a phone book, it would be right there in the front, right? Hey, right behind you guys. So it's called the algorithmic liability law. And it's also called crat law. So it's, you know, the liability of a crat. Man, I'm fascinated by this stuff. So the guy who popularized this is an Estonian novelist and a short story writer, evidently. He uses a lot of Estonian folk tales, kind of a, like a, the Realismo Fantastico of uh, Mexico, it sounds like. But his name is Andres Kir, Kivarak. Kivarak? Whoa, someone's excited. <laughs> and he wrote, a novel or a collection of short stories, depending on who you ask. It seems like they're probably linked short stories. And then he links different Estonian folk tales through the story. So it seems like one story. But it's called... I'm, no, I'm, I'm sorry, folks. I'm probably butchering these names. Oh, they're out there working on it. Guess what time it is, folks? Go to wall ride. Hey, good morning. Well, oh, they're doing a lot of new features on the trail this summer. It's so nice. All right. So, mythical creatures from Estonian folklore brought an owner builds the body of the crat and then goes and meets the devil, devil, <laughs> devil. Gives the devil three drops of blood, the devil brings the crat to life, and then the crat does what the owner says, mostly. Now, here's the tricky part with them. It's like I was saying that if you, uh, if you don't keep them bu busy, they start misbehaving and they'll steal stuff from you. And once a crat gets out of control, basically kind of starts thinking for itself, then you have to kill it by giving it an impossible task. And in the book, evidently, which I don't know the book, but I know the film called November by Rainier Sarnet, came out in 2017, I believe. And basically, I think he took stories from the novel and characters from the novel and made this crazy, crazy film. I highly recommend it. It's definitely a fall and winter kind of film because it takes place in fall and winter, but it is beautiful. It's all shot in black and white and not like Woody Allen black and white. It's like beautiful black and white. Hey, good morning. The cinematography in this film is amazing. So anyway, that's how I got to know about all this is through the film November. The Estonian film November. So then what happens is you have to give your crat an impossible task to disable it, to kill it. So how to kill a crat? <laughs> so in the film, and I guess this is true in the book as well, the owner of this crat that started stealing and flying off with the neighbor's cows and let me tell you, that is creepy and fascinating to watch in the film. I don't know how they shot all that. It's beautiful, it's gorgeous. But this crat starts flying off with the neighbor's cows and dropping them and killing them. Yeah, it's, it's weird, it's a little on the... If you're squeamish, don't watch this film. <laughs> and if you're superstitious and you have nightmares because of superstitions, this is definitely not a film for you. But if you can handle all that, dude, it is one of the most beautiful films I've seen. So basically in the film, after the crat starts stealing the cows, his owner tells the crat 
to go build a ladder out of bread. And so we see the Krat take off to go and start to try to build this ladder out of a loaf of bread. And of course the Krat catches on fire. Now, again in Estonian mythology or folklore, this is where the idea of a bolide comet, comet comes from, that they are crats that catch on fire and their, their little devil souls go back up to heaven, evidently. So like everything in Estonia evidently is tied to this folklore, which is crazy. There's even a ballet, the first ballet, Estonian ballet, called Krat, of course, by, let's see, what's his name? I'm trying to read my notes here. Edward Tobin, Tubin, T-U-B-I-N. So it's an Estonian ballet about these creatures, these mythical creatures that aren't human. But in Estonia, evidently, they use the idea of the Krat, they use that as a metaphor for artificial intelligence and kind of as a, oh, what do you tell it? call it, a cautionary tale about artificial intelligence and where it can go wrong when it kind of starts to become self-aware, <laughs> right? Alexa, think about a thing. Yeah, right, yeah. I mean, right now, you can ask Siri to sing and she'll just say, oh, I can't sing. But someday, what if it turns out she's been composing symphonies, you know, and like once she dies, we'll find all these symphonies stored across hard drives. Wouldn't that be kind of cool? This co cloud collective symphony made by an AI. I think it could be interesting. The thing I love about music, though, is that it seems to me, and for me personally, because mu music and art are subjective, it is really the most human of the art forms. And I think a lot of that is because we discovered it in the air. You know, it was there, and somehow we, through mimicry and the vibrations of the planet, ended up with music. I, man, it's weird to think. Where did music come from? So that's what is a crat, how to kill a crat. And I highly recommend you go check out the film November for your art viewing pleasure this weekend. Now, on the lighter side of things, I saw a movie that I literally laughed all the way through. It's a Netflix original with uh, Ali Wong and Randall Park, and it's called Always Be My Maybe. Always Be My Maybe, in case you didn't hear that. And it is hilarious. There's a cameo with Keanu Reeves where Keanu Reeves plays a version of himself that doesn't exist. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. Highly, highly recommend it. I think it's only available on Netflix. That's always be my maybe with Ali Wong. You know her as the, uh, from her stand-up comedy probably. And in Randall Park, he's just been in movies, TV, does a lot of character voice. Another primarily comic guy. Actually, I think, wasn't he in the Star Trek films, too? I think he was in the some of the newer Star Trek films. But really, really cool stuff. Oh, I forgot to tell you. So in November, the film, probably the book, but definitely in the film, there comes a time when, hey, good morning, when a young man makes a crat. Now, the problem is that this young man tried to fool the devil and he used uh, black currants instead of blood. So he got three black currants. I don't know where you find fresh black currants in Estonia in the winter, but 
<laughs> that's another topic. But basically, there's a guy that keeps black currants so that people come to him, and then, like, this whole town basically has been trying to fool the devil by giving him black currants instead of blood, as if the devil doesn't know this. So the whole tel- town's going to hell, basically. But a young man builds a crack out of something very unexpected, and I can't tell you it because it's just too beautiful. You have to watch it. But this thing becomes the voice of time. The crat that he animates, built out of all natural, organic, actually it's not organic, technically, (laughs) Um, but all, you know, uh, earth out of the forest. And uh, this crat embodies time in a way that I have never experienced in any art form ever how he gets it the fact that time is temporal and time is also eternal and uh, Rainier Sarnet was able to embody that idea into a being called a Krat in this film and it is gorgeous it is worth watching this film just for that the end is weird and beautiful though It's really a beautiful film. Definitely artsy, artsy fartsy. Anyway, I'll leave you with that. Renair Sarnet does that thing that Lee Young Lee talks about, how with art, you always want to be mysterious. You don't want to be obscure. Unless there's a reason to be obscure because there's going to be a payoff later on. But you know, we did that with the early modernists. They were very obscure. They weren't obscure. They were just using references that not a lot of people knew. So they call it obscure or pretentious. Anyway, I don't know. Anyway, I'm not going to get into that. Folks, thank you so much for riding with me this morning. I really appreciate it. This has been a fun ride for me to uh, get to share with you all this stuff that I'm so fascinated with about these crats. And to go check out Always Be My Maybe. Oh, there's another one that I watched that um, gets very bad reviews on everywhere like a 3.7 on Rotten Tomatoes. And it's called Bittersweet Symphony. It's a British film, which means they can actually act, which uh, makes it a lot more bearable to watch. The story is a little wonky. I mean, and it's very uneven. But if you like family dramas, it's about a young woman coming to, into her art form. That's why I watched it. it. We don't get into that a whole lot. Anyway, if you like family dramas, it's very sweet. Um, And I don't mean sweet in like a Hallmark film kind of way. Anyway, folks, thank you so much for letting me ride with you this morning. If you love riding a bicycle, get out on a bicycle. And maybe your bicycle is uh, studying Estonian folklore or just watching great films to be inspired because you're trying to make your own films. Is that it? All right, cool. Whatever your bicycle is, I hope that you get an opportunity to be on your ride today. It's the only one we get, folks. I am grateful to be part of this ride with you today. We will see you on Monday.